In the early 2000s, China had absolutely no high-speed rail. Just 20 years later, and China has built what is potentially the world's most impressive railway network to date, with over 25,000 miles of high-speed rail. But how did they do it so quickly? How good exactly is it? And should other countries follow their model? There are both huge positives and a lot of negatives to the Chinese high-speed rail network, so let's take a look at this ambitious megaproject. The Chinese high-speed rail network is run exclusively by state-owned operators and funded by a combination of government revenue and debt. This system has been both a blessing and a curse for the network. Their government-owned system allows them to raise money quickly, build without restrictions from other government agencies, some of which have led to the human rights concerns and environmental concerns, and overall added efficiency to the project. It also allows them easy access to the Chinese workforce. However, this plan of quickly raising debt has led to an impending disaster post-pandemic unless something changes. As the network still aims to expand up to 30,000 miles by 2025, their debt has been piling up. It has now reached over $882 billion, which is almost 5% of China's GDP. Needless to say, that is not an ideal amount of debt. It was originally planned that this debt would be repaid through passenger revenues, which would turn out in higher numbers and pay higher costs for the upgraded trains. However, passenger numbers are still reportedly below expectations, and the debt just keeps piling on. And the pandemic has definitely not helped that, as passengers have been hesitant to travel and, in the case of many places in China, completely banned from traveling for much of the pandemic and the last two years. Needless to say, if that debt were to default, it could have major implications for the already faltering Chinese economy. Thankfully, the Chinese railway has also proved to be a large economic boost to the economy over the years it has been built. While the Chinese high-speed rail project originally required international technology, it quickly pivoted to using domestic manufacturers and suppliers for their trains, rails, and all other needed equipment. Those domestic suppliers are then able to be a boost to the economy as they are producing the things in the country, which requires Chinese labor, and have even began to sell their tools and services to other countries such as Indonesia, which is currently building with the Chinese high-speed rail network's technology. It is too soon to say how this impending disaster will affect them, but stay subscribed if you are interested and want to keep up to date, because if something major happens, we will definitely have a video covering it, keeping you up to date on everything that happens. The trains and rails themselves are quite impressive, with speeds going up to 380 kilometers per hour on their fastest routes, like Beijing to Shanghai. This makes it a large rival to airplanes in terms of speed, since it's faster when you don't have to go through the airport and go through security and everything like that. If you ever traveled by a plane, you know what that's like. I personally have never ridden the network, so I can't speak personally to the comfort of the trains, but the images released to the Western press are generally positive though it is likely that those are skewed slightly. However, there may be more than meets the eye to the comfort of the service. A study by Yantai Nanshan University in China found that customer satisfaction is generally rather low, despite the impressive speed. Facilities are reportedly often overcrowded, there are insufficient waiting facilities in stations, and service processes such as ticketing are of lower quality than would be expected of a system that was built with such efficiency. For example, the journal says that if passengers lose their tickets, they must get a refund and buy their ticket again, as the agents have no way to look up if they in fact purchased one in the first place, despite the ticket definitively being in their systems as they are allowed to grant a refund after confirming the purchase. And while the network's scale and speed is impressive, there are massive concerns over the environment and human rights concerns and safety concerns on the project. A joint study between Wageningen University in the Netherlands and the Research Center for Eco-Environmental Sciences in China determined that there were significant environmental risks of the construction of the high-speed network. The construction was completed with complete disregard for the surrounding soil, air, and water environments, and in some places has caused harm to the ecology and landscape of the area. 
And since the trains are normally seen as a better alternative to road and air travel, the true environmental concerns have been discarded as nimbyism by the government. The creation of tracks has also caused significant harm to smaller towns, which may have had rail built straight through their homes without putting a station there, giving them all of the negatives of the train with none of the positives. This has increased distrust in the project overall, which could also be a part of the lackluster passenger revenue. While some environmental departments in China have tried to sound the alarm on these issues, they generally have much weaker power than in Western countries, especially regarding government infrastructure projects. And while their power is slowly rising, it's still not enough to stop development, only to delay it. So should other countries copy the Chinese model to effectively build high-speed rail? Well, that is a very loaded question. From an environmental perspective, that seems like it would be a disastrous idea in the West. Listening to environmental regulators to protect the already dwindling nature in our countries is very important and cannot be overlooked, even if it adds some time to the projects. The financial disaster of the Chinese rail network is also a hard sell to Western governments, many of whom already have financial concerns to deal with without going into debt to the tune of trillions for a rail network. Furthermore, the lack of enthusiasm among Chinese riders is a concern for the future of rail in America and similar places that are looking to build theirs out, as it is a signal that even if the government does go to the extremes to build out their whole network themselves, ridership may not be what is expected regardless. However, it is undeniable that even with those major issues, it is still a project that is heavily impressive in terms of speed and scale. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and stay subscribed for the next few weeks when we're going to look at some of the European models and how those can be replicated or discarded in the future as we look towards expanding infrastructure around the world.